Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and welcome back to the second video about uh, generator functions in Python. Now in the first video we've seen that the generator function is a function that can yield a value, return a value, uh, and then suspend and later resume where it left off. And we've used that uh, functionality to implement a very simple mouse uh, and cat game world in which we have a cats generator that you see here which uh, progressively yields animals, cats, at different locations. So that's how it uh, implements the animation of the moving cat. And we have a mice generator that progressively yields different animals, in this case mice, uh, at different locations to implement the animation of a moving mouse. And then we've zipped these two generators together, right? So the first element of the cats is paired with the first element of the mice, etc. So that we animate the mouse and the cat together and we draw a grid and then we sleep, and that's our animation. Very simple. Just to remind you, remind you let's uh, up Python 3 generators, execute what it does. We have a cat, right, that moves uh, diagonally, and we have a mouse that moves to the left, and that's it. Now, what this is nice, but there is no real interaction between the cat and the mouse, because the cat is just living in its own island within its own function, and the mouse is also living within its own island. And what we want to do now is turn this one directional communication, right, this yielding an an of animals, into bidirectional communication. So the cats generator is not only going to give us new cats, uh, but it's also going to know about the position of the mouse so that it can actively chase the mouse. And in the same way, the mice generator is not just passively going to uh, generate yield mice, but it's going to know about the position of the cat so that it can actively avoid the cat. Uh, and this kind of bidirectional communication is very powerful, but it's also considerably more complicated than the one directional communication that we've done here, because now we can use a simple for loop. And for bidirectional communication, we can't do that anymore. So let's start by not actually doing anything new, but re-implementing what we have here in one sweet for loop in a pretty complicated while loop. And what we're basically going to do is implement part of the so-called iterator protocol that this for loop hides from us, ourselves and that makes it a bit more complicated but it's very informative so say while true okay we have an infinite while loop now first things first if i call the cats generator what do i actually get you might think that you would get the first animal that is yielded but it's actually not the case what you get is an iterator object and the iterator object is a sort of intermediate object and that intermediate object allows us to actually get the animals the cats so that iterator object, I will call it iCat. Uh, and in the same way, mice actually returns an iterator object and not an actual animal or mouse. And I will call the iterator object iMouse. Okay, so how are we going to get an actual animal from the iCat iterator object? Well, that goes like this. Cat is iCat.send non. Hmm. It's not very pretty, but it's a way to do it. It's not very clear either, I have to say. But what this means, essentially, by sending non into our iterator object the first time, what we're going to do is kick off the corresponding generator function until it reaches its first yield statement. So we send non into iCat, and that means that cats will start for i, and i will first be 2. We create an animal at row 2, column 2, that animal is yielded, and that result is assigned to cat. So by sending non into iCat, we've essentially kicked off the cats generator. And in the same way, by sending non into iMouse, we kick off the mouse generator, the mice generator. Now, uh, so then we draw our grid, we sleep, and then we do the same thing again. We again send non into our, into our iterator uh, objects to get the next cat and the next mouse, etc. So this is almost a re-implementation of our for loop that we had before. But then we do it kind of in a verbose way and much less clear, right? But it's the way to do it. Let's see, if I run this, you see, okay, the mouse and the cat move in the same way, and then it stops also at the same point, but now it stops actually with a stop iteration exception. And that seems like an error, right? It's kind of like an error, stop iteration, but it's not really an error. What it is, is Python's way to tell us that the generator functions are exhausted. So here at line 25 here, at some point we send non into our, into our, uh, into our uh, cats generator, but actually the for loop inside our generator has ended. And then actually the generator function stops because there are no animals to yield anymore. At that point, 
Python needs to signal to us somehow that the generator has been exhausted, right? There are no more cats to yield. And it does so by raising a stop iteration. And the same will be true for the mice. The only thing is that the cats generator uh, stops before the mice. Now, the proper way to deal with this is in the same way as you would deal with any kind of exception, using a try accept statement. So I put this in try accept stop iteration. And when a stop iteration occurs, we break the loop. Oh, break. So a stop iteration is not necessarily an error message. It is a way for Python to signal to, to the developer that the iteration should be over because whatever you're trying to iterate through is exhausted. Now, let's run it again. Up, tuck, tuck. And there we go. Now we're back essentially to where we came from, but now we have re-implemented our for loop in this while loop and by sending things around. And now we're almost ready to actually add some uh, bi-directional communication because we've been sending none so far into our uh, iCat and iMouse iterators. And the first time you have to do that, you always first have to send NOM into the iterator objects to kick off the corresponding generator functions. It's a bit strange, but you always have to start with sending NOM. But later, you can actually send information. And it goes like this. So what we want to do, we want to send the mouse into our cat's generator, and we want to send the cat into our mouse generator so that they know about each other and can hunt and flee from each other. Now let's start by focusing on the cat. How are we going to use that incoming information? Well, we're going to do this as follows. We start by defining a cat. And this cat is an animal that starts at row two. Oh, row is two, call is two. And then we're going into an infinite while loop, while true. And we're going to yield the cat. So far, so good, right? It's the same thing as we did before. But now we're yielding the cat, but we're also getting something, namely the mouse that we are sending into our iCat uh, iterator object here. And that arrives inside our generator function in the following way, simply as the return value of yield. So mouse is yield cat. This works. We're sending the cat and we're receiving the mouse. And now we're going to move the cat around. To do that, I actually already prepared in the game world a move function. The details of the move function don't really matter, but basically it takes an animal such as a cat and you specify how many rows or columns it should move. And the move function also adds a little bit of randomness so that it looks a little bit more alive. And it also respects the boundaries of the game world. And because that takes some coding, I prepared it already, but it's a trivial function. Now, how are we going to move our cat? Well, if the mouse.row is larger than cat.row, in other words, if the mouse is below the cat, then the cat should be move cat. So we're going to move the cat by one row down. Else, if mouse.row is above, so if the mouse is above the cat, we're going to move our cat one row up. Uh, and the same thing for the columns. So let me copy that. Call, all right. Oh. In other words, we have our cat move towards our mouse. Call, all right. Did I do that correctly? I think I did. Okay, now let's see um, what happens if I run this. Up. Now you see that the cat is actually chasing the mouse, right? Let's run it again to see it again. Now the cat is, yeah, going after the mouse. Um, it still stops, not because the cat is ever done hunting, right? Because here inside the cat's generator, we have an infinite loop. So the generator is infinite. Uh, it will keep moving the mouse or the cat around indefinitely. But our mice generator is still finite, right? It still yields uh, an X number of mice. So let's essentially do the same thing for the mouse. The mouse has the same kind of logic as the cat. The only thing is that it's inverted. Well, not the only thing actually. Uh, but almost the only thing is that it's inverted. So let's copy paste. Up. Okay, and say, now we're going to work with a mouse. What we're receiving is a cat, right? And what we're sending is a mouse. Now, if the mouse is uh, above the cat, then the mouse should become even further above the cat. If it's below the cat, it should be even moved even more down. Uh, if it's to the right of the cat, it should be moved even further to the right. If it's to the left of the cat, even further to the left. But then we're also in, a, in, in a, well, and that's a bit different from the cat. 
The cat is okay if it's on the same line or the same column or the same row as the mouse, but the mouse is not. So we have another condition, namely if the mouse and the cat are on the same uh, row, we say mouse is move mouse. Where should it move then? Should it move up or down? Well, let's just make that random. Random.choice uh, minus one comma one. So random.choice takes a list, in this case minus one and one, randomly selects one element, and that's how we randomly decide if we're going to move up or down, if the mouse and the cat are on the same row. And the same thing for the column, right? So if they're on the same column, we randomly move the, cat, the mouse up or down. We also need to import random, so up like this. Okay, so let's see, now the mouse should run away and the cat should uh, the cat should chase the mouse, so see if I did everything correctly. Oh, wait. I started the mouse off at position two and two, just the same as the cat, so that's not nice. Oh, let's start it over there. Retry. Okay, now you see the mouse is running away and the cat is trying to chase it. Uh, yeah, and there is some randomness, but they're basically chasing each other at infinitum, right? Because we have no stop criterion. So this goes on, this little uh, cat and mouse game goes on forever. So control C. How can we stop it? Well, I think what would make a lot of sense is if the mouse has been caught, um, so if it's on the same position as the, as the cat, then we should stop, then the game is over. So we can implement that in a few ways, but the easiest ways may be here. Um, what we're going to do is simply say if mouse.call, so in the mice gener generator, we say if mouse.call is cat.call, so if they're on the same column and they're on the same row, raise, stop iteration. So now we're going to make use of this stop iteration, right? That's the normal way to signal that an iter that the generator is exhausted. And you, a generator will do that automatically if the function ends, but you can also do it manually as here. Um, okay. We could have also, by the way, broken, uh, and it would have had the same kind of effect, right? Because a break statement would have ended this loop, and then we would have uh, uh, gotten a, a stop iteration because the function would have ended. Okay, so basically that will cause our, our loop to end because we will end, get a stop iteration and break this while loop here. Actually, we also want to give it one more draw then because otherwise we will miss the frame where the cat and the mouse are actually on top of each other. And that's actually the frame where the, where the cat is smiling. So we want to have that, right? Okay, so let's run it. Oh, what did I do? Invalid syntax on line 39. Oh, I probably accidentally copy pasted this here. Up. There we go. Okay, so now the mouse is chased. Cat got it. Oh, got it. Up, oh, and you have a smiley cat. Let's do it again. Up, oh, mouse is running away. Cat is chasing, chasing. Up, oh, smiley cat. Okay, so now we have bidirectional communication, right? So let's go. Let's, let's go over all the things that we've done because it's not trivial. Working with bidirectional communication in generators is not trivial, but it's very powerful. So cats is our generator function. If we call it, we don't get the first element from the generator, but rather we get some intermediate iterator object that I've called iCat. Oh, that's my, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Quit. That's my RSI break. I'm a very responsible uh, computer user. Um, so the I... to kick off the generator function, we send non into the generator, and then we can actually get the first element. The first time that we call send on the iterator object corresponding to a generator function, we need to send none. We cannot send anything else. That will cause an error. I didn't show that, but that would have caused an error. The next time we can actually send information into it. In this case, we send mouse into it. What happens to the mouse? Well, the mouse becomes the return value of the yield statement. So yield is what our generator gives and the return value of the yield mouse in this case is what our generator gets. Uh, when is the generator fin finished? Well, generator is finished when the function itself is finished or when a stop iteration exception is raised explicitly. Um, if you were be using a for loop, that would have been handled automatically. But if we have this kind of while loop, explicit while loop, we also need to explicitly catch the stop iteration exception. Now, I hope that this is clear. I hope that you uh, that you share my my actually my passion for generators because they are really very, very powerful. 
Um, they're a little bit complicated, but if you work with them a few times, uh, you will get the hang of it and they will, they will become less uh, mystical than they may seem right now. Um, so with that, thank you very much for your attention.